you know, just um, disappointed, um, you know, started fast and then the momentum switched and we were able, never able to recapture the momentum um, and just neither side of the ball played nearly well enough to win a football game. You know, offensively, we started pressing and turning the ball over and uh, defensively, you know, we just, we didn't get it done. They tried to give us a chance with the two interceptions, um, but offensively, we gave it back to them. Proud of Sean Robinson. Obviously, that was a real bright spot for us, the way he came back and, and played defense and played and forced a turnover and made some big plays. Um, really proud of him. Told our team, you know, five and five, uh, you know, predicted to win two. Uh, obviously, did not finish the way we wanted to. Um, but... We've earned ourselves uh, respect and a chance to go to a bowl game. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow and find out where we're going. We'll break for the holidays, and then we'll finish this season right. And uh, that's going to be our focus. And with that, I'll open up for questions. First one's going to come from Suichi Tirada from the Kansas City Star. Go ahead. Yeah, Eli, just on Sean, what, what was kind of the plan with him? I know you said on your radio show he was going to play defense, but did you expect him to play that much, especially kind of in the second half? Um, he had a really good week of practice. And so yeah, we were wanting to play him and then there was a couple of injuries and dinged up. And so they called his number and he answered. Dave Matter from the St. Louis Post. Dave. Eli, knowing what the situation was in the secondary going in the game and with this matchup, what, what was kind of the plan that you thought would give you guys the best chance to win defensively? Well, we, we were going to try to mix it up and play man and mix in some zone and, and, um, yeah, that, that was the plan and, and wasn't very effective. Ben Hockman from the St. Louis Post. Ben. Hey, Coach. Obviously, you haven't watched the game film yet, but I'm just curious, uh, what lessons could Basilak learn from today's performance, today's game? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I thought we pressed early, um, you know, trying to force the ball when it didn't need to be. And then, you know, when we cut it to 16, we had a wheel route to, to – um, Bannister, you know, they, they were in cover three and the guy trailed with him. He's got to come back to the check down there and, and uh, was trying to force it to try to make a play. Same thing on that pick six. You know, he's trying to force a flag throw when he could have thrown the under. And, you know, that's just growing pains. That's part of being in those situations. You can't get it all back at the time. And and uh, that's what we, he was trying to do. And we'll learn from it. Yeah. Thank you. Mitchell Forty from Power Mizzou. Mitch. Eli, obviously Mississippi State hadn't run the ball super effectively this season until today. I guess, did they do anything you all didn't expect it from that facet or, or was it just uh, execution errors on y'all's part? Um, I mean, they they added one play, uh, the same play that Arkansas ran, sprint draw. Um, but other than that, it's, it's kind of what we expected. Um, so... Next one's going to come from Peter Ball from The Athletic. Peter. Um, yeah, Eli, you mentioned the, the change in momentum early. Why, why do you think the team wasn't able to respond very well from the muff punt? Well, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. That kind of happened to us last week, too, and they scored right before half, and the momentum shifted, and we never really responded. I don't know if it's just um, – I don't know what it is, but something that I'll I mean, we'll spend a lot of time trying to fix and work on because we have to be able to respond to the ebbs and flows of football games. And and uh, we just we didn't do it tonight. Next one's going to come from Aaron Ladd. Aaron, go ahead. Coach, now that the regular season is over, could you help us kind of understand what went into from a COVID perspective, just pulling this off? I mean, we had a, a coach test positive on Thursday. I mean, every test is a hold your breath and see what's going to happen. And you never know what kind of team you're going to have and who's going to get contact traced. And on these trips, you're wearing masks and, and uh, it's just a lot emotionally and it's a lot mentally to always be worried about. Um, and these young men and coaches are, are tired. You know, we really are. And I think you saw that tonight. They're just tired. It's just, it's just been hard. A lot of unknowns for nine months. So extremely proud to get to this point. You know, it'll be five and five uh, in this situation. 
and uh, you know, excited that we're going to get one more chance to play. But uh, uh, you know, disappointed with tonight's performance. Totally, uh, from my standpoint as the head coach. But I'm never disappointed in our team this season. I mean, they've shown me what courage is and what fight is, and and uh, I got to do better for them. Next one's going to come from Eric Blum from the Tribune. Eric. Hey, Eli, you kind of mentioned just a little bit of the fatigue for your team here. How do you balance that kind of going into bowl season with, you know, just a little bit of time off here? Or do you have a specific plan kind of going forward for when you find out when the bowl game is? Well, we'll figure out when the bowl game is tomorrow. And then I'll do my best to, you know, rat, get with our operations and our administration and come up with a plan that allows our guys to see their families for the holidays and then comes back and plays in the game. Next one's going to come from Bill Pollock from Missouri Net. Bill? Yeah, good evening, Eli. Uh, I know you've, you've joked about this phrase before, but the uh, last couple of games after your t team was ranked, did they drink the Kool-Aid at all a little bit? Or were there other issues with the last two weeks? Yeah, I don't think we drank any Kool-Aid. I think the fact is we're down to 52 players. The guy that was our starting quarterback for the first two games of the season is playing safety for us in the entire second half. I mean, we just – we're doing every single thing we can to play the game. And, you know, when you when you get down to this kind of stuff, the, the execution is not where it needs to be in order to be successful. And that's what happened. And offensively, we pressed too much. So, no, our guys aren't sitting around talking about how good they are. Um, I mean, we, we just – we're just not playing – we didn't play good football tonight. But anyway. Next one's going to come from Jack Sobel. Jack. Eli, back to Sean Robinson. I, I know it was, you know, just one game, but given the way he played tonight, is, is do you have any uh, inclination to kind of keep him at safety and use him that way as a contributor, at least his depth next year if he comes back? Yeah, I think that move's permanent, um, and he's excited about it. Next one's going to come from Andrew Kaufman. Andrew. Coach, just going off of what you just said, what, what kind of example do you think Sean Robinson has set for this team and, and maybe for just athletes across the country? selfless um put your team first always compete do whatever you t you can for your teammates i mean he he was the first one i picked six to come over there and tell connor basic to keep his head up um just incredibly proud of that young man and in a day and age where other people would have just put their name in the portal or transferred or opted out he, he stuck with us and uh very proud of him dave matter Eli, there, there's some negative plays early on offense that just kind of put you behind the, the chains. Things that this defense did to you that just kind of were, were disruptive, did you feel like? Yeah, the first time, uh, the second drive, they clapped, and uh, the, the officials didn't call it. They, they simulated our cadence. It's happened to us four times this year, and it hasn't been called yet. So, you know, uh, that's a big play. That's a big miss. Um, and, uh, you know, that – basically forced us to punt because it was second and, you know, 24. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you on that. Um, it's supposed to be against the rules. Andy Humphrey, go ahead. Yeah, Eli, obviously, um, you know, younger guys like uh, NS and, and JC forced into, you know, more action down the stretch. Uh, and, and can you kind of talk about what you want guys like that who have more years in your program left to, to take away from games like this when they're, you know, getting all this playing time? Yeah, I mean, I want them to – nobody likes this feeling in the, in the pit of your stomach. Nobody likes this. you got to figure out how not to make this happen again. What did we not do in preparation – um, to make sure that we were prepared. I mean, there's all kinds of things. You know, experience is the best teacher, and we got a lot of experience with young guys out there. All right, next one's going to come from Greg Palermo and then Andrew Kaufman. You'll get the last one. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, Coach, I'm just wondering if you've had any conversations yet or expect to with uh, any guys like Larry or, um, or uh, Nick about whether they're going to play in the bowl game. I haven't had any conversations with anybody. Kaufman. Coach, just, you know, after after the two straight losses to, to wrap up the regular season, how much you, are you, you know, specifically looking forward to having a bowl game to kind of right the ship at the end of the year here? You know, I told our team, nobody likes what happened and nobody wants to go out like that. So we're going to 
put our big boy pants on, face it, get some break for Christmas, and come back and fight like hell to fix it. We'll let Coach go with that one. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.